I, yay. I just love the music. Thank you, Lisa, for inviting us to um, be vulnerable and then be loud about it. And I think also reassuring us that we are in a space and surrounded by folks that are gonna keep us safe in doing that, and that's so important. I'm feeling a lot of gratitude. Are you all feeling gratitude? Yeah. yeah. I feel gratitude. I feel grateful to the folks here at Miraval um, and in this place before Miraval existed who have tended the land, cared for it, loved it, so we can have this place of restfulness, peace, well-being. Marilyn and her team for being so intentional about the planning. Um, but when I, I was thinking, what are some of those things outside of my bed, um, you know, the infinity pool, all those things that I'm really grateful for. I'm grateful for all of you. I'm grateful for the stories that you're sharing. Many people have said that this afternoon, but I'm kind of grateful for those stories where you tell me about your mistakes because Mistakes are hard to share, and it makes me feel like my mistakes are okay. Uh, I'm thankful for you sharing how you're trying to figure out work-life balance. And you might not figure it out this coming year, but you're still working on it. Uh, I appreciate all of those stories. Storytelling is really important for us at Ripple Effects. Uh, we learn from them, but more importantly, the kids who use our programs really learn from it. It's integral to everything we do. We care about it because for millennia, people have been using stories to pass on traditions, to pass on teachings, to make them feel connected, but also so their stories don't disappear. That's something I'm worried about today, is that there are a lot of stories and voices being silenced. And so with that, I am really excited to pass over the microphone to a dear colleague, a courageous storyteller, and here, I might have to look at my notes, but I worked really hard because I want to say all of these because they're so important. Mother of Nate, wife of Jason for 26 years, daughter of Jose and Francisca, Viegas, thank you. Sister, aunt, friend, ally, in-law. She is a generational trauma survivor. A Chicana, e chingona. <laughs> An ally, which I already said, but times two. A lover of statement earrings. An 80s music, music lover and an unapologetic reader of banned books, Sandra Martinez. Thank you so much. So thank y'all so much. Um, everyone should have a Heidi as a hype woman. If, uh, and I have been blessed to have two Heidis in my corner. So thank you all. The other one's right there. Thank you all so much. Um, who here considers themselves a storyteller? If you're a teacher at once, you're a storyteller. If you're a parent, you're a storyteller, right? If you are a leader, you are a storyteller. If you are a sister, oh boy, you're a storyteller. If you have friends, you are a storyteller. Sisters, right? Um, so why is storytelling so important? Well, they build connections, right? They build community. They allow us to see others and to be seen. There is a Mayan virtue, and I want to make sure that I get this right because I think that, that words and, and names are so important. It's in like etch, in like etch. It's a Mayan virtue, and this Mayan virtue means you are the other me. You are the other me. So I'd like for you to turn to your shoulder partner or somebody around you, and I want you to say to them, in like etch, in like etch. In, in like etch. And I think that's so important. Um, I mean, all the, the um, stories that I've heard in my time here. So I drove up from Dallas, and so I was like, oh no, like, oh, I'm literally like shaking in my boots. What is going on, right? And, um, and I heard, where are my table seven people from uh, Sunday? 
There were some people that I sat with, table seven, and we just shared stories, right? We shared stories. It wasn't about work. It was about um, our kids, and it was about our, um, oh, it was about um, <laughs> uh, candy cigarettes, right? <laughs> and it was about those little, you know, the necklaces that left, um, you know, the, the uh, residue on your, on your neck, right, if you were sweating too much, and drinking out of the water hose, and, you know, just things like that. And in that moment, Celeste, I, I told her, we were having a conversation, and we were talking about... Um, the uh, our my anniversary I just had, and um, I won't get into the details. But she made me, or she allowed me the space to really reflect and have an aha moment. So I didn't expect to come here to have an epiphany about my in-laws. I did not, <laughs> but I did, right? And so I was like, thank you. So thank you so much for that. Um, so I would like to introduce to you. This is Sandra Luz Villegas. Cute, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was in. I, I was searching, I, and I and I think we do this um, just generally as people, right? We want to connect. We want to be seen. She wanted to be seen, right? Um, and as an adult, I relied on books from Julissa Arce, from Sandra Cisneros, the poetry of Jose Livares. Um, just recently, I read um, a book from Alma Zaragoza Petty, which is uh, Chingona, and so um, and so that's why I was like, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm a Chingona too. So, um, but she is six or seven, uh, right around six or seven. Um, as you can tell, it's in the early '80s. Who has the rattan photo? Anybody else have the rattan <laughs> chair photo? Quick, um, just just FYI, it's six hundred dollars on Etsy. So, yeah, yeah, $600. Um, and so I was looking for a mirror and or a window. And so if you would, I would be so honored to be um, able to share a, a small excerpt of a, a story that I submitted to Latinas 100. This is the third edition. Um, the third edition and all the editions um, are really about um, elevating um, Latinas, Latinx, uh, Latin, you know, however, however you'd like to identify uh, in the Latina uh, community, and really uh, um, elevate those stories because we know that those stories are not one singular story. They are um, based on, you know, what country you come from, your language, what region, the, you know, political issues, your immigration status, your economic status. Right? And so we can't be put in a box. And so I'm really excited to be part of this because this just really opens the box for uh, not only for people who look like me and sound like me, but for other people as well, for the whole community. And so I would be just so happy to be able to share um, just a small little excerpt of my essay. An excerpt from a love letter. A letter to me, from me. Sorry, I didn't think I was going to do this. I practiced so much. Um, how I love you. An awkward, perm-rocking, freckle-faced, not be need, jelly shoed clack, perfect niña. You are perfect, mija. Losing yourself to antagonists and protagonists. Transporting to kingdoms and attics, oceans, tree houses and mountains gobbling up page after page of biographies, culturas, and languages. Exotic, mundane, intriguing, and sometimes agonizing worlds. A mirror on each page filled with stories that reflected your own life experiences of heartache, fear, and pain, despite your short time here on Earth. Oh, I love you. Living in chaos, shrinking your voice, ensuring you only took just a tiny bit of space. The fear of stepping on a minefield that was your household. Built a wall around your heart, 
because the ones that loved you, I'm sorry, the ones who were supposed to love you, hurt you the most. Memories, sometimes faint in your mind, but still firm in your belly. This little girl may look like somebody you know, may walk the hallways in the you know, schools that maybe you taught at or supervised. It, she might be in your neighborhood. She might be you, right? In La Quetch, I am the ocean, right? And the idea is, is that I had to share my story. All those other books didn't reflect who I was. I had to share it, right? Um, so many times we do, we, we stop short of, I remember in kindergarten, uh, as a kindergarten teacher, I would um, be reading like um, Pete the Cat, right? I love my white shoes, I love my white shoes, right? And uh, the, uh, a Pete the Cat steps on, a, on a something red, oh, strawberries, what color does it change? What, your, what color is, are his shoes now? Yes, friend, I had a cat. Oh, that's great, thanks for that. Um, I, well, I had a cat, but it died. Oh, has anybody, right? Yes, well, I, my cat didn't die, but my grandma died, and I'm just like, what is going on, right? And, but what were they trying to do? They were trying to connect, right? They were trying to connect, they were trying to see each other, they were sharing, right? And that's what she needed, and that's what she got at school right? There was alcoholism and there was abuse at home, but at school, she could be safe. School, she could be safe. Um, so why? Why did I do this? Um, I will shout it from the mountaintops. I went to therapy, right? Um, but um, also as an SEL manager for um, Dallas ISD, I um, at one point um, was part of a uh, student leadership conference. And through the student leadership conference, they did, an em they did empathy interviews. And these are all teenage kids, right? And they were asked each other, tell me about your fear. Tell me about what you, know, what you love. Tell me about your favorite food, right? And so they really got to know each other. And through that, I thought, you know what? They're doing it. They're kids. I mean, like, they're doing it. They're doing the work. How amazing would it be if we could continue doing that, providing spaces that we can share those type of stories, that we can share. And so I'm so excited to be part of this because I'm like learning so much and I'm getting to know people and I'm like, oh yeah, me too. And you know, it's, it's just it's, uh, at table, I think it was table seven. Of, uh, yes, you said, I am in the right spot. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, right? You said, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And that's what I felt. And so I did this because I wanted to be able to fill in that gap. We talked about that earlier, fill in that gap, right? Fill in the gap of mental wellness. Um, in the brown indigenous community, mental wellness is still very taboo, right? For somebody who looks like me, who speaks like me, who has that experience, who you know can speak in a different language, it's, it's received, right? It's received a little bit better. I had to fill in that gap for, for little Sandrita, right? Little Sandrita and her family. And so I did a lot of identity work, and this is who I am, right? It evolved from um, very easily. You know, if somebody asked me who I am, oh, I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a, right? The first five things. But then when I got to number 30, oh, who am I, right? Number 40, oh gosh, number 50. And depending on who I was at that moment, who I was around, right? And so identity work, as leaders, we've all done some sort of identity work, right? I mean, we're doing it today, right? Um, who are you? Who are you, right? I mean, I don't know, who am I, right? <laughs> who am I? And the heart map really just, um, Evolved. It really evolved. And there's a, a quote from a uh, from um, Alma Zaragoza Petty, and she says something to the effect of, 
actually because I lost my quote here. Um, she said something about us being a, a, a branch, I'm sorry, a, a tree. And all of our experiences are all these branches right off the tree. And you have to um, accept the lo feo y lo bonito, the ugly and the beautiful, right? Because all of the branches provide shade, not just the pretty branches, all the branches provide shade. And so, you know, I had to really um, embrace that. And then my method. Well, I love books. As a uh, kid in the 80s, we used to go to um, uh, garage sales. And as an ESL student, you know, I was really tasked with whatever you can read, whatever, anything that you can read, you read. So I was reading the back of shampoo labels. I was reading like, you know, um, uh, cereal boxes. And I remember going to a garage sale and um, there was a ton of books and they were like 10 cents each. So my mom said, yeah, go ahead and get as many as you want. Okay. So I had a handful of them come home and my mom is like, what are you reading? They were all romance novels, <laughs> right? And I was like, well, I'm just reading. I learned a lot. <laughs> I didn't know what I was learning, but I learned a lot. Um, and, so, and so, you know, it was the 80s. And so, um, <laughs> Um, community, and so for me, books was my vehicle. Um, for, um, for you, it might be uh, Instagram. I'm not, you know, I'm not a very social media savvy person, so that to me, I, I, you know, I, that's not my joy. And so what is that joy for you? What could that joy be for you? And then lastly, community. Um, we've been really talking about community. Who is your person, right? Who is your Heidi? Who's your hype woman, right? Who's your Heidi? Who's the person that I was mentioning earlier? Who's the person that's going to throw you off the cliff but make sure you, that, uh, that you have a parachute on, right? Who is your uh, comadre? In, uh, in Spanish, uh, we, we talk about comadres. And comadres are your god, uh, is a godmother to your child. And when I looked up the um, actual definition, um, it was, comadre is a, a woman, women who have a shared responsibility, right? In that case, it's raising a child, it was a god, you know, god child. But I really, that really resonated with me. You know, women who have a shared responsibility. And so the people next to you, right, th those are your comadres. Those are the, the people who are going to um, sustain you when you, um, maybe need that extra, extra push. So we have a few minutes. I would love it if um, you could do also, you know, some um, reflection on who you are, okay? On your tables, there are um, some hearts. And you're going to list, think about, peel back the top five things, right? Uh, the easies, the I'm a leader, I'm a you know, mom, I'm a, a sister. Peel back. What would be your number 15? What would be your number 30? What would be your number 50? Whatever that might be, right? And, li and list at least two things, let's say. Two to three things, okay? And I'm gonna give you, hmm, I'll give you about two, three minutes. I know that's a lot to ask for in three minutes, but let's go ahead and do three minutes. Okay, and we're wrapping up. So what um, I'd like for you to do is um, you're going to turn to a partner, and um, I'll ask Heidi here to, uh, I'll model what we're going to be doing. Oh, and yes, they do kind of smear a little bit, but it's okay. We were talking earlier. If you didn't like it, you could just erase it and put something else. It's fine. Just roll with it. Just roll with it. Um, so Heidi, what would you like to know about? My name, okay. So um, my name, it's, I have a lot of stories about it, but one of the stories that is most top of mind for me right now is that um, for a long time, um, I allowed people to call me S Sandra or Sandy because there was another Sandra already, um, you know, working there, so they would just give me another name. And so I allowed it, but that's not my name, right? Sandra is my name. And, and it's okay if you can't pronounce it, the effort is what really, you know, touches my heart. It's, it's um, the dismissive part that's dismissing me, dismissing my parents, dismissing, you know, my family and my culture. And so that's, and so I said that I think in like 20 seconds or so. And so that's what I'd like for you to do as well. 
uh, turning to a partner and the person with the shortest hair, because I have short hair, will go first. <laughs> um, and so uh, just take about 30 seconds each. Okay, thank you so much. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think it's really important and I wanna challenge you. Um, first of all, uh, the first challenge, I have two challenges for you. The first challenge would be to continue to add to that heart. The second challenge would be to, the challenge would be to take the, the, the paper off the back of the sticker. That's the second challenge, because it, it was a, a doozy. But uh, I guess like it would be the third challenge. The third challenge is maybe wear it. Wear it around, right? Uh, here, you know, the, um, our hosts are been just great about who, you know, ask me about, right, and, they're, and who they are. Wear it. Continue to add to it. Okay, so I challenge you. Those are my three challenges. Um, and the last thing I would say, and I think, um, you know, share your shine. Okay, share your shine with others. Um, I would ask you to reflect um, just briefly, right, just briefly. How does the storytelling show up in your life? What spaces are you making to share stories? And what did you need to set aside to share your story? For me, it was, I don't have to be grammatically correct when I'm writing stuff down, right? Oh, that's my time. I have to be grammatically correct. I can, add, I can go from English to Spanish, it's okay, right? I don't have to exactly like define everything, it's okay, right? And so what do you need to set aside judgment? That's okay, right? Um, and then lastly, what other voices are you hearing out there that you would like to share with, um, with you know, colleagues, with, with friends? What are, what's inspiring you? Is there an editorial? Is there a podcast? Is there you know, um, a video? What other things? You know, we've already shared a lot here, and so I would ask you to continue to do that. Continue to do that, to share, to tell your story, um, your story matters. Um, and lastly, I just want to say, in lack etch, I see you. Know, you are the other me. I see you. We see each other. And so for that, um, my name is Sandra Luz Martinez. And uh, thank you so much for your time.